Looking for a local park to visit that features a lake that covers nearly 80 acres? Pickerel Lake Park has that, plus a 900-foot floating boardwalk that helps you cross the lake. You will also find four miles of trails through woods, forest, and wetlands. So let's go exploring. So I spotted this bent over tree and it really intrigues me because of its organic and sculptural form. But what is the best angle to shoot it from? What is the best position? And I covered this before in previous videos. So I'm just gonna walk around it a little bit. I don't necessarily like these stalks in the foreground to be right in front of it, but right here is an open spot. And you can see the tree growing or what's left of the tree coming up between the stalks. And the stalks actually frame the shot. The tree is sort of centrally located, but the uh, stalks also add some framing to it. And I like the way that the light plays on it a little bit. It adds to the interest of it because it's on just part of it and not on all of it. And it shows off the shape of it, the curve, the bend of the limb. talked about my love for trees and photographing them because each one of them has their own unique characteristics and here's a tom tree look at the base of this tree it actually looks like two trunks in a curve that are joined together at the base that's just something really unique that I haven't seen before or seen recently so that's something I'm going to want to take a picture of so remember when you're taking pictures of trees or plants that you focus on what makes it unique. And so for this tree, I'm gonna to wanna to capture the base of it. I don't necessarily need to shoot the top of the tree or higher up, but just focused on the base because that's what makes it unique. And fortunately for me, there's some light on it as well. Whenever I'm at a new location, I try to find areas and spots of interest that personify that new location. So behind me, you see this little creek running through a wooded area. It's actually coming from the lake or from the wetlands near the lake. And that's just a quiet little spot. And you see the reflection of the sky and the water. So that brings light back into the shot because it's actually kind of dark although there's some highlights from the sun filtering through the leaves. So this is gonna make for a quiet pastoral image. From where I'm standing, it's a great view of the waterscape in front of me. So what I'm gonna to do to enhance that image is to frame it up. And by that, I mean I'm gonna have a tree on the right side and a tree on the left side, kind of like bookends. And so they force the eye to stop at the sides and all the more draw your eye into the center point of it. So it's a natural framing by using the tree trunks, but it also helps to focus where your eyes are gonna go. So using trees as framing mechanism is also a way of helping to enhance the shot and bring nature into your image. So a big surprise, it clouded over again today, just like it did in Prairie Wolf Park. 
Now, if you watched that video, you saw that the sun eventually came out, and that's what I'm hoping for today. But in the meantime, I'm looking for things with high contrast for lighting and for texture and so on. So for right now, I'm going to be using the water to reflect the light. So if you look in the distance, you can see, I think, lily pads growing up out of the water. And I'm going to use the reflected light from the sky on the water as my light source. So that way I'll have the contrast. The plant life will be dark and the water will actually be light. For most people, this looks like a jumbled mess. To me, it looks like nature. So you've got the green growth coming up out of the water and floating on the water, mixed in with the limbs of a tree falling over, crisscrossing. There's a lot going on here. And when you come back down, you've got a little waterscape, quiet little nook of a space within this location. And it says a lot about the location. So here's this waterscape in front of me. Very rarely does it look great in a picture when you just have flat lines, flat horizon without anything in the foreground. To take your composition to the next level, you're gonna to wanna to add elements in the foreground and in the background, and maybe even in the middle to add depth to your image. Now I've talked about framing before, this is part of framing, but it's also about depth. So right now all you're seeing are flat lines, horizon lines, and the tree line. But if I back up and maybe catch part of these leaves in front of me, so it's in the foreground, that adds some depth to it. Because then you can see, oh, that's quite a distance away, and it adds some interest in there. Now if I walk over here, capture this little tree in the foreground, that's going to add something as well. So now it's helping to fill the frame more and you have the branches or limbs going up into the sky. So you've broken up those flat lines and open spaces. I really cherish natural spaces like this because most of the time all you hear is the breeze blowing through the trees, you hear birds chirping, singing to one another, and for the most part it's quiet and relaxing and re-energizing. So how do you convey that in an image? Do you take a picture of the whole wide landscape? Or do you just focus on something quiet and still? And that's what I'm going to do here. You can see the tree to the left of the frame. That's what I'm going to focus on. It's been here a long time. It's seen a lot of changes. It's experienced a lot of storms. And that shows in its shape and form. And that's going to remind me of this quiet place. Sometimes like today, the path that I'm taking is one giant loop. It's too large for me to backtrack or to take a second time around. So whatever I'm seeing now that I'm interested in taking an image of, I'm going to take it now rather than backtracking and maybe getting it in better light some other time. That's a lot like life. You only get one time to go through it. You don't get to backtrack and redo things. So you do the best that you can with what you have, and hopefully you help people along the way.
Pickerel Lake Park, also known as the Fred Meyer Nature Preserve, is located in Cannonsburg. For more information, check out KentCountyParks.org. Thanks for exploring with me. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked and learned something new. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel and getting notified when a new video posts. And I hope to see you out on the trails. Thank you.